Hello everybody. First of all, I'd like to apologize to not being able to come to Detroit to give this talk in person. I hope you're all having a great time at the conference. I wish I was there, but unfortunately it was not possible for me this year. So today I will talk about Calyx, which is a new product that Lightband has been building for, I believe, two years now. And it's now available for use. My name is Renat Cavalcant and I'm principal engineer at Lightban, work on the Calyx team. I guess you already have heard about uh, Calyx during your day at the reactive summit this year, but no, nonetheless, I'll give a short introduction to it, explain our motivations to build such a product, and then give a quick demo so you get a good understanding of how it feels to build a Calyx application. But before, let's talk about Akka. If you have been following the work of Lightband, you know that we have been providing solutions to help developers to build reactive applications. That's basically what Akka is. Akka is the most powerful and successful actor system implementation of the JVM. It has enabled developers all around the world to build reactive distributed systems without having to build everything from scratch. It's our patient to make distributed systems affordable and accessible to a broader audience. Distributed systems are hard to build and therefore we want to provide the tooling to make it accessible to any developer out there. We can consider Akka as a runtime where you can implement your business logic and let Akka do the heavy lifting for you. We provide very powerful tools to help you at this task. The most pow powerful of them, in my opinion, is Akka cluster. So think about that. Distributed databases providers like Cassandra or CockroachDB or message broker providers, think about Kafka, they all provide cluster solutions. In the cloud era, with application service serving millions of users, data needs to be spread, sharded over many nodes, and someone needs to ensure that data stays consistent. But what about your application code? Can you also distribute your application? Well, the easy path here is to build stateless applications. And stateless means that you deploy as many instances as you need and you let the database layer take care of the consistency. The common technique used in such a scenario is the classical optimistic log. We read that from the DB and the, the data is version and when you have to save it back, you check if the, serve, the version you have and the version that is in the DB is still the same. If that's the case, you can save it. If not, the process fail, fails and needs to be retried or automatically or retriggered by the user. This technique works until it doesn't work anymore. That's pretty much fine at small scale, but, but not when you need to serve millions of users. This is when libraries like Akka becomes relevant. You want to be able to build applications that can take that kind of load without having to rely on optimistic logging. And that's what Akka cluster does. It will manage data over the cluster for you, including persistence in a, in a way that you don't need to resort to optimistic logging. So Akka is great. It allows developers to build extremely performant applications. We love it. However, the story doesn't stop here. While Akka gives you the tooling to build your own clustered applications, you are still responsible for its deployment and to maintain the whole cluster infrastructure. By that I mean you need to manage your database, you need to manage your Kubernetes cluster, you need to take care of security, just to, to mention a few. For those reasons, we have built Calyx. Think about Calyx as a cloud runtime for reactive and distributed applications. Calyx is building the idea with the idea of providing building blocks that you can use to implement your business logic without having to even think about how data will be persisted, how data will be retrieved, how your application will scale out, how to manage your application cluster, and so forth. The philosophy is bring your code, Calyx does the rest. But how does that really work? So 
and reality under the hood, we manage a Kubernetes cluster, as you could imagine. And in that cluster, we run uh, what we call execution cluster. And there, when you create a project, it will live in that execution cluster. You come and you deploy your service. And on that slide, the user function on the right side is your code, the code that you're going to write. On the left side is a Calyx proxy, and they are all together. When you deploy your user function, we put together with that with your container, your user function container, we put the Calyx proxy, and they will find each other, they will work together. When a request comes in, it goes to the proxy, and the proxy delivers data to your user function that has the logic, your user function will process it and send back to the proxy, and the proxy saves the data. So if we look a little bit closer, what we have here is like your project that you're creating Calyx, so you deploy your code, and they all go together with the proxy. Then as you go, and you may need more resource power, more, more computer power, we scale out your service to a few other nodes. But those are not stateless nodes. They form an ACA cluster. So your code on one side, they go always together with a proxy. But on the proxy side, so at some point you have, let's say, three pods, each of them running two containers, um, your code and what we call a sidecar, but also the sidecar in Kubernetes uh, uh, terms, for us we call it, it's our proxy running there. So your code does not make a cluster, it's your service on one side, but the proxy that goes together with your code that are deployed together, they do form a cluster. Now, whenever, if we go back to the previous slides, I, I have a line showing request coming in, it goes to the proxy, and if there is data that needs to be brought to memory, it will take that from the database, put in memory, uh, take the command that just got in and send it to your code, the state of your model and the command. Your code will do what needs to be done and return to the proxy, the new state, if the state was updated, if it's an event source entity, it will return events as well that needs to be perceived. So this uh, dance between the proxy and the code happens on each time that there is a request. Keep in mind that the proxy is an ACA cluster and it's managing the persistence and your code is just uh, providing the logic to be applied on the data so you don't have to deal with persistence yourself. But how, how do you do that? So you start by defining your APIs using gRPC definitions, everything in Calyx uh, today is about uh, gRPC. Then the Calyx uh, tooling will generate class for you to implement. So you define a, uh, an entity, an event source entity, and we generate uh, the skeleton for you. You just have to implement it. You can test it locally using unit tests, integration tests, or you can even run the application on your computer. For that, we're gonna, you're gonna start your user function and also a proxy in a container, in a Docker container. So the proxy and user functions are now running on your machine and you can just use them like to test manually if everything is working as expected. The same happens in integration tests. We also start a proxy, and uh, but then it's automated, of course. And once you are ready, you deploy to Calyx. But when you deploy to Calyx, you don't deploy the proxy. You only deploy your user function. We provide the proxy. It's included in the, in the cloud infrastructure. So Calyx has different components that you can use to build your system. And the first one are event source entities. They are backed by a journal and use commands and events to mutate its states. Basically, commands get in, are validated, and events are emitted. The emitted events are persisted by Calyx and then applied to the model, updating its state. Event source involves capturing changes to data as opposed to overwriting existing values. Then we have also other kind of uh, value entities, another kind of entities also persisted. Uh, the difference here, they are very similar to event source entities, except that they don't emit events. 
they are not event sourced they only persist the current state and that's why we call them value entities they are entities but the whole state is persisted the whole value that are in memory is persisted on each incoming command the model decides if the command must be rejected or accepted if accepted typically the command will mutate the state and the state in its whole is persisted next we have replicated entities they are also entities but they are not persisted they are uniquely identified by the given identify identifier but they don't go to the storage they stay they are distributed over the class so if you have uh, your application has three nodes they will be in all of three of them in memory and you mutate in one node the change will be propagated to the others eventually so they are eventually consistent but in memory uh, data structures think about uh, crdts and uh, distributed eventually consistent distributed cache now those are entities and the two first entities they are persisted and but in all three cases you can only access them if you know their id so you can always read the data if you know the id but sometimes you need to do to do other kinds of queries you want to build a model that you can search that's not only based by id for example you have many users and now you want to find to collect all users that has an uh, email address that uh, ends with uh, gmail.com for instance for that you need to create an index and that's what views gives to you so views are means to expose different representations of your model you can generate views based on the events of an event source entity or from the states change of uh, value entity every time that you change a value entity the whole state is propagated to your view in the view implementation you get the value entity state and then you decide uh, what to do and it allows you to query for the entities using different fields you know, like uh, using the email address instead of the the unique id and you are free to 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 more to persist or to index the way you want you can say that you have a user and at the view side you also use the same model the user that you can just search by email or you can create another type you can say uh, on the, the entity it's about a user but in the view it's a little bit different it's my user view for instance and there i don't store the password for the, for example the last the last type of uh, component we have are actions they are the most simple one they are stateless whenever you call an action it respawn a new action for, to, to receive the request and when it's finished the action uh, just disappears so they are stateless if you put this state in there it just get discarded it's each time and why you would use actions well there are a few use cases. the first the most common one is the pure functions you get some inputs you produce you process data and you return that's just pure function computation you transform from a to b you can also use actions as a facade in front of your entities so the action receive the command from the exterior uh, from from the outside and then you do some transformation and you forward it to the entity and the entity then responds to the to the action that then respond to the caller caller and uh, the other options are uh, you can also use actions to subscribe and to publish events so you can subscribe to to a topic kafka or google pubsub and push data to kafka google pubsub but you can also uh, subscribe to event source entities events for instance and push into kafka into uh, on, a, on a on a topic and those are what we call the calyx components and they are a few more features we have first I, I already mentioned about the topics we have broker integration if you choose to deploy in google uh, cloud you get integration with pubsub google pubsub otherwise you can bring your own uh, kafka you configure it, uh, your kafka uh, usually people use uh, kafka in the cloud as well you just configure uh, kafka in, uh, in calyx and then your calyx application can start to read and, and, and push that into kafka as well 
We have timers. Timers is a functionality that you can only use from an action and, and timer you can say, okay, I want to make this call, but not now in five minutes. So you schedule a call to be done in five minutes and this persisted. So if you shut down your machine, your, your nodes at that moment and bring them back, they will be executed. We have ACL, uh, so access control list. You can annotate your method to say who, who is allowed to, to call it, who I mean anyone on the internet, it's open to the internet, it's only available for the internal service and so on. And we have JWT support. Okay, so I'd like to, to write a small application, give a, a, a small demo, and that's what we're gonna do to, uh, right now. I will use the Scala template for that. It will create a value entity for us. I will call it Kdix demo reactive summit. I will just skip the default options for the ver versions, library versions, and then the package I call it Kdix demo. Oops. Okay, we have here our project. I will just quickly open that on Visual Studio because I want to show what is inside before I start to compile it. Uh, it has just some proto files with the definition of my entity. Here is the state of my entity. It's a counter. Well, the template comes already with a model, so you can play around with that. The goal is that you delete that afterwards and use the template to start your own model. So we just keep going with the counter for convenience. And it has commands, message that can be sent to it, increase, decrease, like increase the counter. And the important bit here is that we have this information telling Calix that we need to, we want to generate a value entity uh, to manage that state. The state in question is the counter state here. I will add one extra field here I will say that this this guy here has a name, and what is that? So we have the counter state is what is persisted, and the current counter is what I return when someone asks to get the counter. So that's my external representation. And just to make it a little bit different, I'm adding here the name. So uh, next, I will compile that but I will open it in IntelliJ. Uh, because then it's more convenient to, to work on it. So let's, let's have a look what got generated. I have a main function, which registered the counter and I have the counter that I have to implement. So let's do it. So the counter, the first thing is the, what is the empty state when there is no counter there? When I have not in my database and I want to send my first command, what from where I start? So I need an empty state or initial state. And I think the very sensible one for a counter would be something that started with a, a counter that starts with starts with zero. Then when an increase command comes in, what I will do is I will create a new value that is uh, the current state pl plus my incoming request so increase value by so so much then i have a new value and i tell now calyx what i want i want calyx to persist that update that state that's an integer or long i don't remember yeah an integer and here's the state i will just send a new state to calyx and calyx will persist it for me and then I confirm to my users that the command was accepted by sending this empty message with kind of acknowledgement. No? I will just copy this code here because it's almost the same except that this is the decreased one and I will do a subtraction and when the user sends a reset I will update the state back to zero the empty state and I reply and and finally the current state when I 
someone requires request the current state I will return this other type here which is uh, then reply I will reply with demo current counter but the thing here is I have two options well first first option is to pass the state the state that is persist is the one that is getting returned here uh, in, uh, passed to the to the method and it's counter state and the next one is the name and the name I can use in the command here in the, the com incoming command there is the counter ID that's one option but this is also available on the context is the entity ID I will use the entity ID is the identifier of this entity to fill in the name that I added here this one and the context is always available to your entity and the entity ID will be whatever we use to to call this counter and a view I will create a new package here in the protobuf folder call it views and counter view photo and I will copy here some code that I already prepared and uh, first some basic protobuf configuration configuration uh, imports I would say then I want to import the types that I have already defined it here in my Calyx demo project and I will define a service and if you remember the previous one here it was saying that to the we said to the code gen that's a value entity in this one we're gonna say to the code gen that's a view so first I will start with this message here and then the updated methods the the query method uh, let's let me start with the updated method and I explain what it is so the updated method is saying there is a method that will receive counter state that is the state of my entity and will return current counter which is that representation that I have to that I want to expose to the external world then inside it I have uh, Calyx annotation say well I want to subscribe to any change that happened on entities identified by this entity type call it counter and then I want those updates to go to the counters table and now I'm going to define the counters index of table which I do by create another method that receives a request and return a stream of count current counters and it will say give me everything in the counters index in the counters table whose value is greater or equal the value that I get from my request and you see here value it's repeated here so the, this field here we will need to match this one and that's what we get from the outside and is used to, to execute the query when we generate our code we generate this main function and we have one counter here but now one component but now we have two components we have the counter and we have the view so what I will do I will delete this one and I will let, I will let Calyx generate it, generate it again I compile and now let me close this one this one as well and now I have the view and the view receives counter state and return current counter for the empty state in this view we are fine to just say no and for the update we will just for every time that we get an update I will just up return a new counter current counter effect update state and the first thing is the counter state is the value the second thing is the name but where I get the name here well the name I will get from the update context and the event subject here is the 
entity ID for the state that is being passed here inside. And that's my view. We have our view, and now I want to deploy it in production. So I will start the SBT again, but then now passing my Docker Hub username to it because I want to publish that image, that project on my Docker Hub account. To publish that Docker image into Kilix. Uh, normally you have to install the Kilix client. I have already done it, but for Mac you have a brew install. For Linux and Windows there are other tooling. Uh, you can have a look at, at all our documentation. But uh, let's say I have it already installed. So the first thing that I will do, and I want to show you, of course I already signed up, but I want to show you that you can sign up from the command line. If, yeah. And you get this page where you can fill in or you can connect with Google. I'm using here my Google account, my, my private one. I just continue. And, and I don't have any project yet. Okay, I sign up. I think I still need to authenticate. Let's see. Yeah, I want to continue. It will ask me to give authorization to the command line to have access to, to my Kalix project. Great. Now I will create a Kalix project. This one. I will create a new Kalix project, Kalix demo reactive submit. And on this region, you can choose the region. I'm on Google Cloud and so far so good. And let's see the image got published. It's Octonato Kalix demo reactive submit. And then I can call this command in Kalix, which will create a new service, deploy something with this name, Kalix demo reactive submit. And that's the image that we are looking for that it should look for to deploy. Okay, Kalix service list, yeah, unavailable. And now my service is ready. The next thing, so I want to be able to call it from outside. So I will ask Kalix to expose this service and it will generate a URI for me, this one. And I will go back to my GPC code, and the port is 443. Okay. And everything that is greater than 10 is there is nothing there so that's it so what we saw here is we can develop an application with very minimal code just the basic just explaining to calyx what it wants for the views explaining to calyx what is the business logic and all the rest is being taken care by calyx that's basically the, the magic source of calyx is giving to you an ACA cluster without asking you to manage an ACA cluster you just write your business logic. How we can build a Kalix application, I want to go back to this slide here. And uh, what we saw, it's a very simple application, of course, for demo, we should keep it simple and small. But imagine, imagine that you have a very big system, lots of counters, and at some point you need to scale out. You bring your code, your code is just the counter and the view, and they are deployed there. But the state is managed by Calyx. And as I was saying, we do that by using the ACA cluster. So now your application is a clustered application and stateful because the ACA cluster take care of the state. At any single time, even if you have 20 nodes deployed, there is only one instance of each single counter in memory. It doesn't matter where, they will one instance over across the whole cluster so that we manage the state for you we managed a stateful aka cluster application for you you only bring your code and that's the the magic source of uh, of calyx is that it's allowing now you everybody to build an application 
on top of aqua cluster without even dealing with clustering um, database kubernetes and everything you just bring in your code we do the rest okay before i wrap up a small announcement or teaser for near future we are working on the spring sdk which is based on spring boots no protobuf encoding just java you come you write your code in java you use Jacks, jackson uh, serialization and you can use rest endpoints the defined rest endpoints using spring annotations thank you very much i love you to try out calyx the demo code it's on uh, my github account at uh, github.com octonato slash calyx demo reactive submit stay tuned for the upcoming spring sdk that will be very it's really shaping very well i'm ha very happy with uh, what we are doing there and if you have questions i think uh, we still have some time for questions i will be around otherwise you can contact me at renat at lifeband.com and my twitter account is just octonato like my uh, github one thank you very much